Hey, what's up guys? Last time developers gave us map Lotus. Well, now a new agent Gekka, which means that right now it is time for a new video in which I'll check how the Gekka skills work with all other abilities in the game. We'll find out if the Gekka's Molly breaks Killjoy Ultimate, if women can break doors on Ascent, what radius the abilities have and whether women will aggro on Sky's Dog and all other abilities. In general, there will be a bunch of useful information. I did more than 140 checks, so I wish you a pleasant viewing and let's get started. So Astra can pull Wingman but not so strongly that he won't be able to continue his movement, so he will still reach his target. This doesn't happen with DZ, well it makes sense, he flies above the ground. This pull has a minimal effect on Gekko's ultimate, considering how strong this trash is, it doesn't matter to him, plus he can jump in the end. Wingman doesn't even react to Astra's stun, calmly running forward without any problems, maybe slowing down a bit, but not so much. All of Gekko's abilities pass smoothly through Astro's ultimate, we won't focus on that, it is all logical, the only thing is that Dizzy's flash won't pass its projectile through this wall, but we will talk about it later. So Astro's stun has a much stronger effect on his ultimate, the speed noticeably decreases, but in the end you can still jump on your victim in the same way. In case anyone missed it, Gekko's Molotov deals 150 damage, which is 3 very fast hits of 50 damage each. I think they'll fix it, it is too much damage for a short period of time. Wingman can run forward for 30 meters and he also bounces off the wall like a boom bot from race. However, Gekko's ultimate covers twice the distance, it is basically about 60 meters plus if you attack at the end, the distance increased to 70 meters due to the jump. Also with Gekko's ultimate you can jump into portals in such a way that you immediately fly into them with a stun. And this is also very imbalanced, opponents won't be able to do anything at all because its radius is 6 meters. In short, this ultimate will catch everyone there and breaking it quickly will be very difficult. Wingman doesn't react to opponents inside smoke, so I won't bother inserting all smokes like I used before. It works fine without it, however, if he enters the smoke, he will trigger of course, but otherwise he won't. The same goes for Dizzy, while he's behind the smoke, he won't flash opponents, but if he manages to fly through the smoke and get inside, he can flash them. By the way, he can fly in the air for 3 seconds. The stun effect from Bridge has no effect on the wingman, just like Astro's stun, or rather, no effect at all. The stun effect from Bridge has the same effect as Astro's stun on Thrash, it works well and slows down creatures considerably. Bridge Aftershock can break Dizzy with one hit, wingman with two hits, and it doesn't break ultimate because it doesn't do enough damage. Here another trick, the wingman has a wide range of vision and triggering, but there is still a possibility to time a flash so that he becomes blind and runs through you, but if there is a wall behind you, he will turn around and then trigger. When using Trash, you will also catch Breach's flash, just like your character, that's default. However, it is impossible to flash Dizzy, as he can detect and flash you. Plus the flash duration isn't enough because he flies longer. Breach's ultimate throws the wingman off, but he doesn't care much, it just reduces the range of his actions by a couple of meters. It has no effect on Dizzy either, he doesn't care at all. However, this Trash ability already throws and stuns for some reason and it stuns very strongly, reducing speed. Nevertheless, again, at the end you can still use the jump and its distance doesn't decrease. Generally, Wingman will not run after you indefinitely, he has a certain radius of action, but you could say it is decent. To kill Wingman, sad as it may be, it will take 3 shots from the Wendell. If you use the Ghost, you'll need 4 shots and 2 shots from the Sheriff, so apparently he has 100 health points. Gekka's Flash is very easy to break, just one hit from the Classic and it doesn't work instantly, so it's not really our power. It takes 5 shots from the Wendell or 8 shots from the Classic to break the ultimate, so it seems he has around 200 health points. This is strong in range, he doesn't fly for long or far, but he can speed up to 50 meters away, and if you come up with lineups where he only appears a little, it will be difficult to turn away I guess. Thrush by the way can jump 10-12 meters forward during the ultimate, which is also quite a lot, plus he jumps high. Well, there are no problems with Gekko's Molly, it can be thrown very far, it bounces off the walls and you can make many lineups with it. Wingman defuses the spike as much as the player does and takes the same amount of time to plant the spike. When Wingman plants the spike, the sounds are of course different, you can listen for yourself. Spike Plus, by the defuse sounds, you can understand how close he is to complete defuse.
Moldovs of course deal damage to wing one, so you can also cover the spike. Well, in general, he is strong, but not immoral. The ultimate also breaks, but it takes more time. Well, it is understandable. The health points is twice as much. It was interesting to check if Thrash has enough health points to pass through Brimstone ultimate. In fact, it is not enough, but with a jump you might make it. But honestly, I remember to check it so you can do it in your game. Brimstone simulator speed up the wingman and gives him additional distance that he can run. So there is still a small bonus from it. The same with the ultimate, it also becomes faster, it's already quite fast and here you can even hit it. By the way, you can also just jump with the ultimate, not hit, but just jump if you need. You can use Thrush not only to disable your enemies, but you can also do it with your teammates or even with yourself, so this will be a perfect agent for griefers. Dizzy has a really interesting mechanics, he can blind in the area, so he doesn't shoot his own team, but if you stand very close to an opponent, he will flash you too. And as you may have guessed, the wingman can also attack his own team if you are next to the enemies during his stun. Chamber Strap doesn't react to any of Gecko's abilities, it just stands there like it did before. But you can easily break this trap and teleport Chamber with Gecko's Molly. You can escape from wingman's stun including using abilities, though not all of them, but more on that later. Chamber can teleport away, for example. Wingman also triggers Cypher's trap, but he doesn't really care about it. The only thing that decreases is the distance between them but it is still quite large. Dizzy doesn't trigger Cypher Trap, which is a bit strange, even though it's fine. However, Trash triggers Cypher Trap and it won't let him go, but even in that position, you can jump onto your target. If Wingman is planting the spike and gets caught, he'll wait until it's broken and then run to the right spot and plant it. And yes, if he's carrying the spike or defending it, he won't pay attention to the enemies. You can take Gecko's Trash with Cypher's camera, you can also do this with Wingman, even though it's useless, but it is possible. But you can't take Dizzy with a dart, nor can break him. So this is one of the few abilities that doesn't destroy Dizzy. Like I said before, you can dodge Dizzy even without abilities, just need to jump away in the time and the projectile will fly somewhere else. You can also block Dizzy with Sage Wall, there are two scenarios, either she'll get aggro and won't have time to shoot due to loss of visual contact, or you simply place the wall at the moment when her projectile hits it. Wingman doesn't react to Fate's cat at all and neither does she to him. It is also quite strange, but you can can catch Wingman with Fate's Cage. He just runs through it as if nothing happened. And the same thing applies to the ultimate in two points. The cat doesn't drag and the cage doesn't hold your ultimate. It is also quite strange that Fate's reveal doesn't mark Wingman or the ultimate. I don't know if it is bug or feature, but it makes no sense. Even if a Fate cat buys Gecko, it won't lose control of its ultimate. And it won't be blinded either. The Fate ultimate also doesn't drag to Gecko abilities. It turns out they have no fear of fearless Pokemons. Now about how to dodge the Wingman. You can jump over its stun if you do it in time, you can also jump over Wingman itself, which also works, or pass through it with some other abilities. Well, of course, you can dodge the stun sideways, the only thing is that you can do it far away, it is very far. The same thing goes for Dizzy, you can not only run away, but also jump away using various abilities, you feel like you're in the matrix at the moment, honestly. Also, just knife break all of Gekka abilities, one knife for Dizzy, two knives for Wingman, and four knives for trash. If you start using your trash and Kai use his knife and you are within the range, control is cancelled and the ultimate is lost. But with Wingmon the knife doesn't affect it at all, it will run all the way to its target. Or if you tell it to place a spike, even under Kai's influence, it will still run and place the spike. The same thing goes for Dizzy, even if you throw a knife in the right timing, Dizzy will still not be disabled and will continue to blind you. You can also blind Wingmon with Chaos Flash, but it doesn't last long, so he will still attack you. The only thing Think is that with an additional second of blindness, you can dodge him. Also, Gekko's ultimate can be flashed, meaning the player in the ultimate completely lost his sight. And of course, Chaos ultimate has the same effect as the knife, I won't even repeat it. Killjoy's turret won't shoot any of Wingman abilities, which is particularly logical, because the flash would pacify it every time, but there is probably some strangeness in this, in short, it doesn't show them. The same goes for Killjoy Nanosworm, it doesn't react to Gekko abilities, and what's even more interesting, you won't see this nanosworm storm on the ground with Thrash. Thrash also hooks Cypher's trip wires, but he doesn't see them until he actually hits them. Killjoy's ultimate doesn't affect Gecko's abilities in any way, they will continue to perform their functions unless the Gecko itself fall under the ultimate. Neon, by the way, is so fast that she can just pass through the wingman, he won't catch you, so keep it in mind. As I mentioned earlier, with smokes, the same situation applies to walls, so I won't even waste time on it. If the wingman doesn't see you, he won't be able to detect you through the walls. Additionally, the 
wingman doesn't react to stuns from Neon, just like with the other stuns, PIM. On these clips I showed how to dodge the wingman. If you start moving with the wandle in hand when the wingman is already jumping, you won't be able to escape him, but if you start moving beforehand, there won't be any problems. Gecko's ultimate can be stunned by Neon, just like with the other stuns. Gecko's Molotov is great for lineups, but keep in mind that you can block it, like with other Molotovs, so your super lineup could be ruined. With Omen's Flash, you can see how it works best against the wingman. Omen's Flash doesn't fully blind, it only reduces visibility, so the wingman can pass you if you're standing far enough away. Wingman can also turn around on Omen's Teleport and still catch him if you don't time it right. In Omen's Shadow Walk state, you will receive a stun from the wingman, and this stun will even persist on you after cancel your ult. This situation with Trash is more dangerous because if he immobilizes you, you won't be able to cancel your ultimate, and you will just end up in front of the enemy in an immobilized state, so you need to be more careful. Also, Dizzy's flash react to Omen's shadow wall, and this effect will stay with you even after returning to the normal state. Omen's flash can also hit Gekka's ultimate, but you'll still be able to get where you need to go. Here is what the correct teleports look like if you want to dodge the wingman stun. Harbor's wall will significantly slow down your wingman and hardly affect rush, the wingman will run about 50 meters less with the wall than without it. Additionally, Harbor Zult will not affect Gekko's abilities, he won't care about the ultimate. Unlike other smokes, Harbor's dome can save you from dizzy speed if you manage to get inside the dome before it hits. The speed will hit the dome itself and not pass through. The same goes for Astro's ultimate. If you jump into a portal and press the spike or diffuse button with the help of Wingman, he'll run across the entire map to do it. It looks really funny and particularly buggy, to be honest. But I think this could be used to make cool fakes, pretending that you are going to defuse, but actually not, if they don't fix it by the time the bint returns. If you catch Phoenix with the Gecko during his own ultimate, he'll respawn in a normal state. Also, Raze's Bombot doesn't react to any of Gecko abilities, it just passes them by and heads towards the player. Of course, you can break the Bombot with the Gecko grenade, though there is no point in doing so, but you can do it. Here is something that can sometimes save your life. With the Raze Satchel, you can destroy Dizzy, so this might save you someday. Reyna's Flash blinds at Thresh just like Omen's Flash or any other Flash in game, according to Reyna's Flash rules. There is an interesting thing with Wingman. If you go into Reyna's invisibility and he notices you earlier, he'll continue to follow you even though you're invisible. If you use invisibility in advance, then in this case, the Wingman will just run through you and won't touch you. And the strangest thing is that if he starts stunning you, he will still catch you even in your ultimate. It is a bit too much, isn't it? Just so you understand, a bridge stun won't stun you during invisibility, but a Wingman can. Gekka's ultimate, despite disabling all of Reyna's ability, will not interrupt on an ongoing heal. Sage Slow Orbs has a significant impact on both of Wingman and the Thresh, both of them losing the half of their speed. Another interesting feature of Sage Wall is that Thresh can disarm you through it, even though they cannot do so through normal walls on the map. This means that the wall may not be as effective at protecting you as you thought. Sky's Dog cannot catch the Wingman at all, it has no effect on him, and the Wingman doesn't react to it. However, Thrush can catch the Wingman without much trouble, which doesn't make much sense logically. The same thing applies to Sky's flashbang when it comes to her dog. If you stand close together, the dizzy effect of the flashbang affects both the dog and the player, although the player cannot be affected separately. Sky's flashbang affects both the Wingman and Thrush, but there are no corresponding sounds indicating that the enemy has been detected, as there are with normal players. After Thrush catches you, you cannot control your burst direction or the activation of the blinding ability. The same thing happens with the Sky Dog, control is completely lost, except for her ultimate, which continues until the end. So as all does not mark the Wingman or Gecko's ultimate, but the drone can do so. This logic is not entirely clear, but to be honest, it is okay. You cannot break Dizzy with the Sova dart from his drone, just like with the Cypher dart from his camera. Inside Viper's ultimate, Wingman field of view is reduced but he still reacts to you as quickly as possible, so be careful. By the way, Gekka's ability points are not removed in Viper Zult, which is also strange, the duration of the ability remains the same. Wingman doesn't react to Yoru's clone or teleport, but he does react to Yoru even when he already entered the invisibility mode. Wingman will chase you until his ability expires. If you manage to use Yoru's ultimate before Dizzy shoots you, he will not do so and will stop aggroing you, so to speak. Gekka's Molly breaks Yoru clone and his teleport and Yoru's Flash will activate in the direction you launched the Yoru's clone before. Reyna will not take damage from Gekko's Molotov when she using his E ability, 
Elysium, thanks godness for that. And now for the most ridiculous and unbelled thing, Gekko's Molotov can break Nanobot, Turret and worst of all, Killjoy's Ultimate. This will definitely be fixed because this Molotov is so good for lineups and deals 150 damage even on the edges, so it will definitely change. Breaking an Ultimate with just usual ability is not normal I guess. Gekka can pick up an Ultimate ability once after it's broken. However, I was able to pick up my other abilities more than 7 times, so it is essentially infinite. I don't know if you'll be able to use them so many times even in a round, I think you just won't have enough time. Wayman will break Sage's wall if it appears in his path to the spike installation or defusing, so you can't escape from him that way. Astro can pull the wingman away from defusing the spike and he dies immediately, but the stun doesn't affect him. The situation is the same when you plant in the spike. If you send wingman to the door on ascent, he will just jump away from it, but if it triggers on enemy, he'll break the door completely or until his action ends. The same goes for planting or defusing the spike. If you send the wingman to the spike and the door closes, he'll break it completely, but in this case, he will also run to the spike and starts planting or defusing it. No matter for how much time he was broken the door or how far he ran. You can send wingman to defuse the spike from a distance of no more than 23 meters, but he can plant the spike from any distance. As sad as it may be, you can send the wingman to defend the spike even if you know you don't have enough time, but he will bravely run to complete his mission, even at the cost of his life. When a wingman is running to defuse, you cannot knife him. This might be a bug, which may have been fixed by the time you're watching this, or it could be a feature. I can't remember if I already mentioned this, but the wingman does take damage from all the grenades while he's defusing the spike, so yeah, he's not immortal, you can kill him. If you get disarmed by Gekko's ultimate and then by Killjoy's ultimate or vice versa, the effect will continue. If two ults happen simultaneously, the time is not added together, but simply lasts as long as Killjoy's ult, because it lasts longer. By the way, Gekko's mollies can break the dome in harbor and leave it with very little health points. In this clip you can see that the molly breaks the cypher straps and his camera and you can also see the maximum height of the molly. Ultimate orbs have priority over Gekko orbs, so you'll pick up ultimate orbs firstly. The wingman can receive information about the enemy old drone and this also works for trash. If the wingman is defusing spike and uses bridge ultimate, the defuse will be cancelled and the wingman will die. You can also cancel defusing or planting by using raises satchel, zoom of wingman out of the defuse ring. If your wingman is defusing and you and your teammates are killed, the wingman will not continue defusing and you will immediately lose the round. The same goes for planting the spike. If you're left 1 vs 1, thank your wingman to plant the spike and you get killed, then he will not finish planting and will die with you. The wingman will not run along the ropes after you and while disarmed, you will simply move very slowly along them. If Killjoy's ultimate disarms an enemy gecko, their wingman will still finish defusing or planting the spike in this case, they can handle it. This is flash is very strong against Viper's ultimate, because he will shoot at Viper even if he doesn't see her, but if he is just inside her ultimate, so Viper mains need to be careful here. The wingman can climb on some boxes to plant the spike somewhere high up, but they cannot climb on ropes. There are many bugs with planting, but I won't show them because I think they will be fixed quickly. By the way, wingman moves at the same speed as Raze's boombot and they cover the same distance, but I think the wingman is a more dangerous character. Dizzy can flash a large number of players at once and doesn't really care how many targets are there. If the wingman's target dies, he will continue running to find a new target and so on until he finds one or the duration runs out. Wingman can jump small curves by himself, but if you send him to plant or defuse the spike, he will definitely jump over it. A little movement for trash with bunny hopping, you can even climb stairs faster with him, which is actually useful and can save you a few meters of distance. If you throw a dizzy flash outside of the map, it won't respawn, so be careful when throwing it, but you can throw away other abilities. If you send Wingman to defend the spike and overtake him, he will wait for you to give up and then he will defuse if you let him do it. Dizzy's flash and other agents flash stack, but flash from other agents blinds more strongly, overriding the effect of Dizzy flashes. Sage's wall can be almost completely broken by Gekko's molly, one knife hit is enough, but only if it takes damage during the building state. If the wall is already complete, less damage will go through. Oof, I think I checked everything, write in the comments if I missed anything, if you made it to the end, please like and subscribe, because making these videos is really hard. Well, that's all for me, Thanks you. thank you so much for watching this video, see you soon, bye bye.